A very warm welcome to my community. I'm Sherwood Lekaski, as always. I'm pleased that you have joined us. Now, community stories are an integral part of a collective cultural heritage. By sharing those stories, you help to preserve and to celebrate the traditions, the customs and values that make our communities unique. It ensures that the knowledge and experiences of previous generations are passed down to future generations, fostering a sense of continuity and cultural pride. Now, this week we have returned to the north of the island to hear the community stories of a well-known Bajan who shares those stories in the good old Bajan style. It's over to you, brother. Bajan Farai? Well, I actually born in Port Lane. Spike Stone St. Peter. I is actually some one of the few people I know that born and bred in Spike Stone. I was born at Dr. Greenwich office, which is at the bottom of Porter's Lane, to your left. If you go down there above um, Sheriff, it's a little further up, and Elder Radwell, which is um, Elder Whitehead. Right. So I grew up down there. Um, it's nice. It was nice, man. Spike Stone is. Uh, Fantastic place, Porter's Lane is one of the sweetest places you could grow up living, man, for real. I actually, back in the day, I grew up with um, Miss, around Miss Olivet Bellamy, um, Andy Davison, Suzette. Them was my, like my sisters and brothers. If you look at my eye, I think on this side they got a cut over it. I could hear a story about that, if you want to know, I think. So, you know what I mean? Um, growing up there, you know what I mean? I remember once say we was poor, it's just I didn't know what poor was. You know what I mean? Because I never knew what poor was until you see rich people. I just thought it was ordinary to grow up there. But going back to Miss Bellamy and them, I, my mom was a fish vendor in Spokestone Fish Market. The old Spokestone Fish Market, not the one with the plexiglass and all that. No. We had BRC wire. Yeah, BRC wire, piece of wood going across and you will slug the fish on the day. Then you're going to call off your fish or people being in the front selling the fish. But, no, to Miss Belly, back with Miss Bellamy house, which was also um, Mr. Bellamy, which is known as Brown. He was a tailor man, him and Darwin Duck. I grew up knowing them in Sandy Street. But my mom would leave me by, by to play with Davison, Suzette and the Dazzy, order that they come in. One day we was down there playing in, and you know, children, hard ears and we jumping up in the bed, and for some reason, I don't know how, somebody jumped on the other side of the bed, and I went up because it was the smallest one. And all of a sudden, I was through the window. Fierce plan, bugger them, I cut. Now, back in the days, I knew hard ears, which my ears soft and now. But when I was younger, my ears were real hard. Then I saw you from again, you're behind tear. So all of you get beat for that. And as the only boy that end up with a boss eye. You don't understand? And I can remember telling Miss Bellamy, man. Um, she like, so how you how you fly out through the window? I was laying down, you're telling lies, you can get beat for that. How you fly out through the window? Uh, mommy, he was jamming out in the bed, are you all in stopping? Uh, um, we tell you stop, mommy. You should have stopped him, you can get beat. You. And, and the lung went down, and in the end, short story, all the way behind the sewer after that episode. My eye they cut, bottom the sewer, them only had them bottom the sewer, but you know, from the blows, but in the long run, we grew up to the best of friends, man, for real. We still got much respect. I actually got to see Miss Bellamy before she passed away. When I returned from the States, she had an accident and stuff like that, and she asked me the first thing, boy, we got all that here upon your head for it, like, man. That's how you live in it now, and you know what I mean? It's an honor to have seen her before she passed. I actually took photos at her funeral and everything. And it's hard thinking back about it now, knowing that this was a lady that did so much of me. Did so, so much of me, man, for real. And, and I was never hungry if Miss Bellamy got food. Never hungry. But we could talk about Porter's Lane from the top. We used to bring water from at the top by the pipe. I had a pipe at the top of Porter's Lane. We used to walk up there for water and bring it because obviously my mom didn't have water and stuff like that there. Um, at the top was, I can remember, um, Miss, Miss Denny, who used to carry her cherries off the tree. Um, Buzzer, which is just a little, probably older than me, which is older than me. Um, you come a little further down, you had 
I remember I do all my hands and he whole family was living there. Um, then you come down, we had Gur, um, Sherwood, we used to live there, called Sherwood Liver, um, Gur, Lindsay, and all them used to live there. Across the road was Gerald Head and his sister, Mr. Blackman, he was a garbage truck driver. Um, below them was the buses, they used to live behind the money and compound. The first man is smoke so much, so much cigarettes and build so much muscle. I was like, so the smoke must be making you get this muscle. But he actually, I think, compound win a bodybuilding competition in Spike Sung. Of Spike Sung was known for that one time. They had a gym in Mango Lane. Whereas that boy, we know this postman, Mr. Loftus Roach. He was a, I, 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 that's one postman, I'm like the guy in a quarrel, really called. Loftus Roach was massive. I tell you, you look at the man, him, and then if you go across Spike Sung bypass, and you pass Alexander School, there's a gentleman um, that's you got a shop right on the bypass. We part the people had a man and pull along the, the sign the other day for the north entry. Don't know why they did that, but that is another story. And at the top right there is um we still got a shop now. He had the biggest coconut car I ever seen in my life as a youngster growing up. But poor name was sweet. And um then you had you come a little further down, there was Muriel, she had a mango tree, we can get the mangoes off of that. But if you time it right, you can get the mangoes. The guy will come and stand up by the road, and you know, you hear the mangoes drop, you don't hit in the leaves, pop, 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 pop. Take off. Straight across the road, snatch your mango before Muriel can look out. Get the mango and stand up across the other side of the road, looking at Muriel. She's looking at you, got the mango in your back. Little caught. Back then, your old school clothes was your home clothes. Now, I've got the mango in my pocket, looking at Muriel. Little hard, you big head boy, we don't stop coming across the for mangoes. Nothing. Like Professor Laha, you don't know if you know who that is. Professor Laha was a magician. The first magician they ever see pull a, a white butter out of her hat. They got white butters? Are you sure? They might got white butters. I'm saying, but yeah, that was that was it. Spike some. Oh, don't no, let me forget to tell you. Miss Rafi had the best sweet bread in Spike Stone back in the 1970s. I tell you no lie. Like, they had the lady named Miss Braffy and you would come up through the gap and you would smell. Even some of you be up the gap if the wind blowing up and you could smell it. You could know Miss Braffy shit. Uh, uh, we will never forget. The other day me and Buzzer was talking about it. Buzzer would be like, she would be saying, yeah boy, the boy's big today. The boy's big today. But she also has something that was very, very, like, I don't know, but people got dogs now, but she has some turkeys. Don't, don't get caught by them. You know, some mash you up, run you. I mean, these are turkeys that will run you from around the woman house. I don't know if they wanted the sweet, but just as much as me, but that was it. You also had below Miss Bellamy, there was Miss Payne. My mother first started working in the fish market with her, and Miss Payne is about, was a six footer, no lie. And her husband, his name was Sack. And Sack was shorter than me. So imagine a lady up here and Sack. So you saw all this, mama. But I ain't gonna talk about that part. Because you have much respect for Miss Payne and Sack. Um, Davidson also was another family we used to play with, which is Miss Payne's son, um, Donna, and Levy. Then we used to play that thing, you get a whole card box and you cut it out, talk about you got windows and playing house and all of that. Sometimes you get put out the house, you can't go in, they don't know if you had to pay a rent or anything like that. But that's how we used to play in Porters there. And then you had Trudy, her children. Um, we used to live in Bosque, back at them family at the time. Then below them you had Ronald. He was the coconut man. Ronald is a man, he was, he and um, I don't know if you can say this word, I know you might go earlier, but also another man from Spokes used to sell coconuts with a man here and chicken balls. Don't know what he named that, but that's what we grew up calling him. Never knew his real name, just that was his name. Um, at the bottom, I don't know if you people could remember, but they had a guy that went to school at St. Lucie Secondary School. Um, Tony, I think Tony Bob, I think he, his name was, he was one of the first children to ever go, um, he, he, to, uh, yeah, he got shot. I mean, he was so cool. He and his mother was so cool. I think his mother's name was Norma. And then right at the bottom, let me see, Miss Burnett, and then I think they moved up there later on. But, uh, oh. And then you had Baji, the barber can't forget Baji, you should cut my hair. Muff, that don't really look good for me, as far as you can remember. But you can really tell the boy what you want a partner and then back in the day. You might tell him exactly how to cut your hair, and 
That's exactly how bad you got, you hear, bitch? That was below Miss Spain. I think Miss Barnett lived below them, something like that, you know? Well, else was in thing. Yeah, but that was Porter's name for your Spokestone, St. Peter. Nothing in, in my mind, nothing in change because they still walk around and still look at the memories. Because at the bottom of, you can stand from up by where living Porter's lane and look to the bottom and you can see Mr. Cheese, my house right below there. And then right next to him was um, Elder Whitehead, which is, or we used to call him um, El Dorado, which was a barber too. And he didn't even say care now, but what kind of hair cut you want? That's the one thing though. I can't forget though. Well, he would just cut you here however he feel like, and then tell you, all right, you're done. Get up, go along, give him money. My father, be like, my, like my, my father had to learn to cut here, because he just needs to do whatever he feel like with your head. That's when you're going to school and all the back of your hair, like in and all kind of thing. But it was a good old days. Sheriff was a man of a quarry if you're going to the trees, you know what I mean, and things like that. But growing up in that area of Spikestone, which is was the first place I really knew was one of the sweetest things in the world, man, for real. But, like I can tell you about this part. Remember back in the day, the Indians would come around with the dark sons, the long station wagons. I had my very, a very bad experience with the Indian man. He had one. He, one time, he used to get the push and you open. And he come down there with his car and thing. And I heard this with my little self. My mother on the right side, I ran and go around to the front and go up on the other side trying to open the man door. Because I see a toy in there. And they want this toy, they want to they want the toy. And they're going to open the door, not knowing that you got to pull it and they're going to open. And the car, the thing just slammed back down from my finger. And I run there, hammer up from the door handle, screaming at the top of my lungs, Mommy, Mommy, you're too hard ears. Get it out however you can. I don't really think that that was thing. I think the child care board, but then I don't think that the child care board, so I don't think that them would again, boy. But the mom was like, okay, just pull it out. And they don't really hope. And eventually he had to yoke the car and come and lift it up. And he ran and said, of course, you know what happened after that. Belt come off of the hook. Box it there. Don't do that again. I never did it again, I can tell you that. I never even went around the man carry was stopped by the door and thing. Um, going up down there also, when they said go above the pipe, they had a little open going, you would fly the kite round east and stuff and thing. It would pop obviously, and below down in there, they call it the trees. I know, um, down in there you got, I um, mean, rest in peace, go see his wife and all them, which live down there, which call it. But when they got the name, Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know what they call it, so I wouldn't even try to investigate it. <laughs> But that's what they call it. I, you always know people say saying the Bible has Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know, but God never hit down there with a the fire and burn slow and so. It's still around to this day. You go down there, you see some of the tallest coconut trees you ever see. I think, you know, Finney. I had a guy named Finney too. I, this guy, he actually fell from a coconut tree in Spikestown, Finney. And, but he would climb the tallest coconut trees in Spikestown, Finney. See me the rope, climb right up. You like, well, if any boy that tree moving, you gotta be careful out there. But if any never the cable climb the tallest corner trees and Spikestone was always I remember going to um it had Burger B, which was owned by Mr. Husbands and then and you'll get your ice cream from there. But as he said in his interview on this show, the sweetest place was the um Elmer Snacket. Elmer Snacky, I tell you no lie. I don't know what kind of burgers there was, what kind of cheeseburgers and the shit that they had. Don't nobody no boy in the talk about me because I got lots no and I eat meat then. I didn't know any better. But Elmer Snacky, you will go down there and buy one cheeseburger no. I can tell you about where how down there look when it was growing up. Bef before Mr. Eddie's that one Eddie's supermarket move, I think they used to live in Boston Bell. There there was an old, an old house below there, right next to Miss, uh, Mr. Cheeseman and them. And I had an old house there. We would call it the ghost house. Because I don't even know who used to live in there. It just the windows used to be open and then the windows used to be shut. But as a youngster, I cannot tell you to this day who used to live in there. Um, Buzz and them was telling me, I can't remember who he told me it was, but I never see them, so I ain't talking about them. But I don't know if there was ghosts. And then you come a little further down, you had Burger B on that side. They had the church on the above side. And then they had Sinner's Bench, which is at the bottom of Mangalene. It was a long cement bench. I don't know what they call it, Sinner's Bench. But I, 
from sinners. I think I could get a good picture of one shop on our sinners bench. But a lot of people used to eat a lot of the shirts and the same Elmer supermarket was on this side and the um, snack it was further up inside them. And I don't know like they never I don't think the I don't eat meat now, so I wouldn't know if we like you test it. But I don't know. But them burgers, I ain't tell you no lie. Them is the most addictive things I ever taste. And the milkshake was tick tick. And you know what you and they make you the smallest straw. So you like and they like a the lot incoming, huh? So then eventually you pop off the cover tree with the cover and the, and the straw and you just drink it like that. Where you on center's bench. But that was spike storm then I had um what was below? Oh, plantations and plantations, lumber yard was below. And before you get there, where's Pizza Man Dot is now? That was the first actual Pizza Man Dot, other than the one from Millionaire Road, that was ever open where Burger B was now. And you could go down through there and you end up down inside the trees. Um, down in there now, they had, I remember they had um, the sanitation service authority, had trucks and support down in there and stuff like that there. But before that, they had. The um, the yeah, exactly, and the arm sauce. The boy don't call it so no more. No, they call it a one on. Yeah, that that on the taker. Get the name of um. Uh, I remember my finger on make a joke about that. Nowadays you don't call them the same thing to change up the whole name and thing. But the arm sauce look in the place that you won't go there. The arm sauce is crazy. Nowadays all down there eroded and everything. You know what I mean? Even the road got holes in it and stuff like that. Uh, plantations, Elmer's, and you go further down. Um, they had Big Wheel. There was another one called Big Wheel. I think the building that that was in burned down. Um, they had the post office. I'm talking about Melit Frank Corbin, and then he was a tailor and a postman in one. So you could get your clothes met and get your mail at the same time from Mr. Corbin. Um, the three sons, Timothy, Philip, and Desmond. They come from up inside the Barber Green now. For most people that don't know, in Spice Town. You know where Church Street Gardens is? Church Street Gardens, you take, you go through Church Street Gardens, and the first right hand that you come to, up through there is the Barber Green. Don't know where they call it so, but that was the Barber Green, and that's when Mr. Corbin was living. We go back in Spice Town now. So a big wheel was above, you had the post office, you had a dentist, I think, upstairs. A dentist was upstairs. And then, when you come back downstairs, I think they had the library right there. Um, a bank was next. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, one of the most famous places in Spike Sound that I can remember was Noah Roach. Yeah, Noah Roach would sell things that you never see before. Comics, you will get your comics, you get medicine, you get combs, you get brushes, everything that you want, Mr. Mr. Roach had. Then you had the Nazarene. The Nazarene was a little bit up from Mr. Roach and stuff like that. I can't remember what was there before the um before the mall open up. But you know, opposite the mall, if you go to round to the back of the mall and over there was Mr. McLean, which was the former headmaster of Spokestone Boys School. And then I had Mr. Marvel. When them left, they had a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Barnfield and stuff like that there. When they look at how Spokestone become what it is today, it totally changed. I can remember years ago, you had people like Toots, she used to sell vegetables. The biggest vegetable tree that was in Spokeson was Toots. I think Toots came from Black Bess. Nice lady, I think you will get everything you want right then and there. Then you go, after you left poor, you will get to the sand shop. Above was Manning's. Um, then you had the fish market. Again, obviously, you would know about their good. You had, in the market, you had people like Cheryl, her mother, you won't call them by the ALCs. Then there's people they got respect for. You had Miss Spain. Um, my mother, and I had Pauline. Oh, and I had a lady, I think she bought here you now also, a lady named Joan Cave. Um, Spikes on Fish Market was, was where it is, but I see a lot of stuff in Spikes on Fish Market. When they started to tell you this, and think, I remember one thing, I had a man named Factories. Don't want to see my name Factories, but he's a serious, serious man. That's no other. And Factories had this boat back in the days, and we said, building Moses out of uh, Mahogany. Fat reason must be his fixed boats and things, so he came from fixing the boat. And that time, they had this a break called the market. Break meaning men to surf behind the market. And that time, the waves breaking and coming in. And fat reason tried to turn the waves to get in and get the boat pull up. But he didn't make it quite good enough. He should have had a watch. Because quick saw, 
the book, but <laughs> when the wave left it, fat users it in the air going this way, and the boat flip, lost all the tools, everything. But at least factories get saved 11 another day and tell the story. But some market was, as I said, everybody in there in some fresh market, including Speedy, he passed away too. Um, I think Miss, Miss K, she passed away, and them too, you know what I mean? All of them was like mothers to me. Them could tell you what to do, but nowadays you can't tell people children are going home to tell the mother to come back and cast you. Then said, boy, yo, you stop running, running about there for you fall and see down there step because in Spike Sound Fish Market, you could not wear bottle slippers. Forget bottle slippers, bottle was actually right next door to Noah Roach. Oh, and this gentleman, he. Upstairs, Noah Roach was a doctor named Dr. Gilmore. Now, one time, if you look at my foot right here, it got cut. And he was running corned beef top cut. So, anybody know about them, I know it was serious. And my mother carried me down there, she thinks. She was talking to somebody and they had to go in. Cause you had to wait your turn. You sit down, say the office, they go in and get. And Dr. Gilmore talked to me like this, and you know, really well to get. And imagine a kid seeing this man that Dr. Gilmore look, oh Albert Einstein look. So I picture somebody like that. And he what he said. He used to talk real fast. And he used to write shorthand. So to me, it looked like he's scribbling like this man don't know he ABC, so he's a doctor. You know what I mean? So, like, go, 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 go. Hey, mommy, mommy come. She's like, what happened, what happened? You talking to me, I don't understand. I mean, I mean, I mean, oh, um, he got his foot cut. Oh, you understand what he said? You know what I mean? And that was Dr. Gilmore, but he was a good doctor. Everyone used to go to Dr. Gilmore, Dr. Greenwich, Dr. Cooper was in Church Street and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But that's the story of Spike Stone. Then you had, I remember, watching the episode of my community with the Germans. And they was trying to remember who the lady was that used to sell in the Spokestone Espinal, and that would be Celinda. She used to sell all kind of sugar cakes and all that. Don't care how much my mother tell me that your teeth gonna drop out, I would get a Celinda for a sugar cake. She had red, brown, she had ginger, she had white. And then she would sell all kind of sweeties and stuff like that. Of course, she used to sell up by the school to a Spokestone boys school, where I went to school and stuff like that, yeah. I mean, but Spike Stone man, I remember going in the Espinal and saying, no, I'm watching TV. From the time the Esp TV come on in the Espinal, um, I, think that I, I can't remember my man named Carl, he used to turn on the TV from the evening and think you were going to Espinal. You, you know, you're watching Sesame Street work down, that kind of thing and stuff. Um, then after you pass the Espinal, you had Mr. Jackman shop. Above you had Jordan's, Mr. Jordan. He used to kill cows. He also, you know where Port St. Charles is? All of that was pasta, you know. Above, above was all that below you bypass was pasta. And Mr. Jordan will have the cows up there, we see up there feeding the cows and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what probably guess he was get cows from, and he would hang them up in the thing, and you would go down there, they would buy your meat. Uh, some people, before they had power bowling and all of that, the people were going to buy the meat on a Sunday morning. You go down there, you get your fresh cow, your fresh pig. I don't know, probably you used to get the pigs from, but. That is what you were going to get your meat, or the, um, right next to here you had Miss Banners, and then the building with all the written scriptures and all that on it was the McGarry's. How we know that that was the McGarry's? I used to be in that house because my aunt, also my grandmother, come to find out that a couple of days ago, come from Major Walk. My cousins, the Fosters, Vida, Vin. And all them come from the major walk. The major walk, if you come up the major walk, then you had Sandy Street, and you had this lady who used to sell curse, you know, my great aunt would send me down there for um thing. But on my way down there, somebody used to tease this dog. And it belonged to a gentleman named Mike. Mike's actually his place had burned down in Chapel Street. I know I think he I told you the, the uh, Mr. Husband told you the story about the parrot. But I as far as I grew up here, and the parrot would say, one the parrot would never talk. And my place caught, caught on fire. That was in Chapel Street, opposite the old polyclinic. Because that was the first polyclinic, not Mars, but down at the bottom of Chapel Street. And the parrot, when my place catch a fire, the parrot let out. My, my, and then you put it in the correct way, fire in your donkey. You know, you could pick sense from meaning and thing, and you could go along with that. And thing like that. Or, or, Mr. McLean, he was actually the head of the scouts. 
he was the, which was the headmaster of a sports town boys school. I think I bought Mr. McLean a lot in the office when he was growing up. He and Mr. Marvin and stuff like that. It's a good, very good, very, very good. And if you go down through that same gap opposite the Methodist Church, we got a house that I think is the National Trust or something like that, that to this day is the same way. I in my 50s and this house is the same way. Like, so it never get no water arts or nothing, sir. The house is the same exact shuttle house, double roof, same exact way. And above that house is then the Armstrong's, which own the sand shop, which is now Fisherman's Pub. I can remember the men up there, when we used to call it the sand shop, remember we up there playing dominoes and all that stuff and things like that, yeah, Mr. Armstrong. But one, two mile in, above that, they had a gentleman who still lived up there. I can't remember his name, I'm really trying to find out his name. But he's the first man I ever see knitting nets. Now a net, if you look at how big a fishing net is, ain't a small task. But every time I pass there, this gentleman will be out there and be knitting the net, knitting the net, knitting the net. Because most people that grew up know, I don't think that they remember um, that. In Spokestone, when you look, when you, if you go, you see Alexandra School got this big tall fence. Before, right there was all houses, you know. Alexandra had a wall, and it had a holes in it. I will never forget when, um, I think it was a little bit older, when Reagan came to Barbados, and he was up there, you know, all the, we was up there standing up on the wall, looking when the helicopter land on Alexandra passed and stuff like that. Yeah. But another story about that is, is that they had a lady that was an actress in Spokestone, can't remember her name. Oh, right? Exactly. You know the thing. You've got your history, boy. You've a whole history book. Miss Colbert and Reagan come here, and we was not allowed to go on Queen Street Beach. We want to know how these people just come here and take up the whole beach, even if we were building closer to the arms house. And them was all up there. Because what part she also was further up, probably closer to um, Cobbler School. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. We can't go up on the beach, daddy. No, can't go down there and get locked up. Well, that was the end of that, because they didn't like to hear lock up at all. You know what I mean? But in all, Spokestown is a place where, as I always tell people, I used to work for town and country planning. Because I know she lived in Spokestown, and then I moved town. So that is town and country planning to me. Bajan Farai in that Barbadian style, preserving his cultural heritage, strengthening his community bonds, encouraging dialogue and understanding, inspiring and empowering others, challenging the stereotypes, enhancing intergenerational connections, and promoting active participation and civic engagement. Thank you very much, Bajan Farai. This has been my community. As we always say here, do take good care of yourself and look out for the interests of your neighbors. Thank you.